Part of our worship service today, we'll be offering the anointing for healing. Now, some of you have known this before, but sometimes it's good to just sort of, sort of go back through it again. This is a special part of the ministry of the church. The tradition of anointing people for healing goes all the way back to the days of Jesus' ministry with his disciples. In the Gospel of Mark, Jesus sends out the twelve disciples to proclaim the Gospel and to heal the sick. Mark writes, So they went out and proclaimed that all should repent. They cast out many demons and anointed many sick people with oil and healed them. And in the book of James, the author writes, Is any one of you sick? He should call the elders of the church to pray over him and anoint him with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer offered in faith will make the sick person well. The Lord will raise him up. If he has sinned, he will be forgiven. Therefore, confess your sins to each other and pray for each other, so that you may be healed. But there are different kinds of illnesses. In our prayers, we pray that God would heal our loved ones who are ill in body, mind, or spirit. Illnesses, illnesses of the body are usually straightforward. You have a pain or an ailment, and, and you know it right away. Either you feel the pain directly, as in arthritis, or, or part of your body just doesn't work right. Then there are illnesses of the mind where a person may not be able to recognize their illness. I know this man who has extreme attention deficit disorder, and, and all his life he's been moving from one job to another, from one place to another, from one life to another, simply because he can't stay focused long enough to maintain long-term stability. He's a good guy, but he has this illness, and so I pray for his healing. Illnesses of the mind, or maybe the spirit, when something has happened to you in the past, and you just can't get over it. Maybe someone betrayed you, or, or hurt you so badly that you can't get it out of your mind, or some trauma happened that just doesn't seem to let go of you. Jesus can bring you healing, whether directly releasing you, or even through therapy. I remember this guy who was involved in a minor car accident. He was driving a minivan with his wife and children along, and it was raining, and he was just turning onto his street, but he lost traction, and he slid into another car. The steering wheel broke his wrist, but no one was seriously hurt. But he just couldn't stop thinking about the accident. It replayed in his mind over and over and over, so that he became afraid to drive after that. And there are other illnesses of the spirit. Sadness, or depression, guilt, Regrets over things done or things not done? We've all known that pain from time to time. Sometimes, sometimes it lingers with you. Sometimes it overwhelms you. The pain in your spirit. The struggles in life. And yet, and yet our God is a God of healing and wholeness. <coughs> One of the primary proofs that Jesus had the power of God is through his healing of people. Jesus heals the man born blind. He heals the man with a withered hand. The woman who was hemorrhaging was healed just by touching him. Jesus raises the little girl from death to life. And there was that day in Capernaum when some people came carrying a paralyzed man. They were determined to get this man to Jesus so that he could heal him. Jesus forgave his sins, and then he healed the man. God gives healing to your bodies 
often using the means of medical science. God works through the tools that God has given you, whether knowledge, or doctors, or medicines. God uses these means as part of God's healing ministry. And sometimes, as a response to your prayers, as a means to strengthen your faith, God also grants miraculous healings of body, mind, or spirit. The healing and wholeness that we seek today in the anointing of healing is simply taking God at His word. As Jesus gave healing to those people in the Bible, so Jesus also gives healing today. What we do here today is simply a continuation of the healing ministry that Christ gave to His church. But I must warn you, there is, there is a kind of mystery in this prayer and anointing. We don't know exactly what God might do through this anointing, or what healing God has planned for each of us. We do it, we do it much like baptisms and Holy Communion, because Jesus told us to. But we don't control its effects. God is at work here, and God will do what God will do. There are lots of stories about people who have received healing. There's the story of a man who suffered from severe arthritis for 20 years and had difficult doing simple tasks like opening a jar. One time at a retreat, he was praying for healing of one of his relatives and his own arthritis dis disappeared. Another person who sought healing from childhood memories experienced a deep warmth and healing for a recently injured shoulder. So you don't know what God will do. But in a few minutes, you'll be invited to come forward to receive the laying on of hands and anointing with oil. When you come, if you come, Come because you seek the working of God in your life, so that you might be a more healthy and whole person. Your coming forward is like so much of our spiritual lives, an act of faith. And God will bless you in the midst of that faith. In the name of Jesus Christ. <laughs>